Our next speaker you probably all are aware of, Robin Shirley. She grew up with an out of control systematic inflammation, which her doctors labeled as systematic juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and chronic Lyme disease. She's spent over 10 years on her own studying and experimenting with nutrition, herbs, movement, and various alternative therapies. Robin has per personally experienced the power of holistic nutrition and lifestyle adjustments on reducing pain and inflammation and increasing joy and pleasure, which is her inspiration to serve and support others with health challenges. Today, she's gonna to be talking about how to make over the immune system. Will you please help me welcome my friend and the mastermind behind the Take Back Your Health Conference, Robin Shirley. Good afternoon. Welcome. Uh, thank you all for being here. I'm so excited to speak up here. I don't have the clicker though. I forgot to grab that. Is it over? Oh, got it. Okay. Great. So, um, I'm sure you guys all know a little bit about my story because many of you have been uh, here to a conference before. Can I just get a little bit of a survey going? How many of you guys heard me tell my story last fall? Okay, so maybe like half of the room. Okay. Um, so that's helpful. Then I don't have to go through everything again. Would you all, I will talk a little bit about it though, don't worry. Um, I think that the sound might be a little too loud. I'm trying to talk quiet because of that. Okay, is, is okay. Good. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to live in a way so that your body can handle the stresses of our current lifestyle, and how to maybe tweak your lifestyle a little bit without completely changing everything and turning your world upside down. So obviously my history is with an autoimmune condition, and that was something that was always in my mind, my immune system. Why is, it, why is it misbehaving in this way? Why is it not working the way that others' immune systems are working? So I wanna get into that a little bit. I wanna just ask you guys before I begin, how many of, and you don't have to answer. You don't have to answer at all, it's kind of a personal question, but how many of you guys have an autoimmune disease or are, know someone who does have an autoimmune disease? Okay, so quite a few people. How many of you guys don't really have a serious condition, but you are interested in learning about how to take care of your immune system or take care of your body? Okay, good, yay. So I wanted to start off by um, telling you guys about my diagnosis because I think that one of, that's one of the most difficult times for someone. And so I'm gonna just kind of open it up and say, this is, I think this will be beneficial for anyone who is dealing with any kind of diagnosis, whether it's simply a food allergy or skin rash or even all the way to cancer or autoimmune disease. So I was diagnosed when I was 12 and I'm 25 now. So it's been a 13 year journey for me. So what I'm gonna talk about today is not something that I expect anyone to be able to implement overnight. This is a lifestyle change for me, and it's been a joyous and pleasant one. And um, that's kind of my, my whole message to you all through this conference, is to make this lifestyle change of taking back your health fun. 
and pleasant and not stressful. And I actually, I wish that I had brought a bar stool up here for myself because I'm kind of in the mood to just sit in front of you guys, but that's okay. I was, I spent the last 30 minutes laying upstairs on my bed just to kind of prepare for this and I had a really amazing vision for the next conference that I do. And so this conference now, it's been, it's been growing to the point where um, I don't think that I can handle it on my own anymore. And I just realized that I've, I do that, you know, that's kind of one of my personality quirks is I try to do everything on my own. My whole life I've just been very much independent, the youngest child, a lot of expectations on you, and, you know, it's, um, it was just something I, I really wanted to prove to everyone that I could do this. And so I was laying upstairs just now and I had, um, I was realizing I'm going to be talking about the immune system and stress is one of the biggest influencers on the immune system and how it functions and I should be really relaxing right now and kind of leading by example. So I was, I was relaxing up there and I had this vision for the next Take Back Your Health conference and I'm realizing that as I'm planning this, it's becoming more and more like a standard conference with an exhibit hall, lectures, you know, food, all that stuff in a hotel. And what I would really love to do is to make this an event that is more of a, um, oh gosh, like I just had this um, image of coming into this beautiful venue, maybe a garden with plants and everywhere, and it's very zen and relaxing and you check in and then you're taken care of and shown where to go and there's a room for the lectures that's very soothing and the chairs are very, very comfortable and then we've got another hall with the exhibitors and then we've got a nice cafe with this are like built in. Like I'm imagining this venue is just very perfect for this event and then there's sections like relaxation room and I don't know, maybe some movies and more movement going on throughout the day and different tracks for different topics, different kinds of diseases or different interests like, you know, natural skin care, pregnancy, birth, you know, healthcare practitioners can go on that track. <laughs> they're, they're... Oh, that's amazing. Stephen has, Stephen has been a volunteer here for several conferences and he's really wonderful. Thank you. Um, okay, so. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I haven't told you guys that I, what date, what the next conference date is, and I usually do that, don't I? I usually have an ad in the program saying this is when the next one's happening, sign up now. And I feel like it's um, become the type of thing where I want, because I'm thinking so much about my immune system lately putting together this presentation, I really want to make this event a very stress-free, enjoyable process for me, which it, it has been a, to a certain extent, but because I told you it's growing to the point where I really can't do it the same way that it has been done. And it, there's so much to do to make it even better. I mean, it's a great event. I get so many of you guys telling me that you're enjoying it, but in my head, if I could show you what's in my head, I mean, you guys would be blown away. And so I really want that, to make that happen for you guys, and it's just going to take a little bit of time to make it, I want to do it the right way. I really want to refigure this out and make it more beneficial for all of us in the end. So I'm going to do some virtual lectures. Uh, I, I don't like calling them lectures, but some virtual health seminars so that we can continue to gather and learn throughout the year. And then as soon as we get the information up about the next one, it'll go up on the website. And there's a lot of, you know, re figuring out to be done with the websites as well. So all of this is going to be, you know, reorganized and, and rethought out over over the next couple of months. So, but thank you guys so much for being here for this one. And I'm just very excited and I've gotten a lot of great feedback. So I'm very excited this weekend. And I am just, I'm really relaxed right now. And so I just, I'm not tired. I'm just like, I'm kind of in a Zen state right now. And I just want to be very relaxed giving this talk as opposed to being too all over the stage. So if you all would just for a moment, get kind of um, relaxed with me. I'd like you guys all to just, for a moment, st stop holding your breath. Let yourself breathe. You may be holding your breath and you're not realizing it. Just let your breath just exhale fully. And then once you're done, breathe in and just kind of get back in sync there a little bit. And also if you're maybe stuck in an uncomfortable position because you're not really thinking about it, just, you know, get back into a comfortable position if you need to rearrange yourself and just stop thinking about what's going on tomorrow for a minute. Just think about today. Everything is going to be okay. 
you know, that's one of the most amazing things that you can tell someone. Everything is going to be okay. And I was just commenting to my mom a few months ago that I miss having her tell me that. You know, when you're a kid and, you know, your mom will come and say, everything's going to be okay. And it doesn't happen very often anymore, but I just distinctively remember that when I was a kid. Sometimes, you know, your grandmother or your mother or your father, whoever, would just say that to you when you, when you fall or trip. And the parents, I don't think they think much of it. But for the child, that is just such an amazingly wonderful thing to hear. And as we grow older, we don't hear that as often. And we start listening to the news more, and we get more and more stressed out because no one is saying that everything is going to be okay. Yet it, it always is, right? Everything is always okay. You know why? Because even if you're diagnosed with cancer, even if your, your spouse is killed in a car accident, or even if you know, something even more terrible happens, like you're killed in a natural disaster or a terrorist attack, I mean, if your family member is, that's one of the most terrible things that can happen is, you know, your loved ones leaving you. But there's always more love in the world to go around, and that's what makes everything okay. So in the end, that's my message about the immune system and getting us back on track with reducing stress. I wanted to open up and tell you that that's, in case I forget at the end of my talk to say that, that's where I'm headed with all this, okay? So I want to, I have, I gave myself a shorter speaking time than everyone else because I'm going to do this pretty quickly. I just want to go through what my lifestyle is like that I, it's an intentional lifestyle. It's taken me 13 years to really be comfortable with this, but it's what I do on a daily basis to intentionally support my immune system. So Take Back Your Health um, is, was something that my family and my friends helped me come up with a, a title for this conference about a year and a half, or two, year, two and a half years ago. And what it really means to me is to be able to enjoy life the way you want to without being inhibited by a disease or um, either mental, physical, or emotional disease or discomforts. So when we take back our health, it's no, it, it's no longer really taking back your health if you're being stressed out about it or if it's not fun or if you're depriving yourself, that sort of a thing. So I try to always Im kind of involve speakers and exhibitors who are also about having fun and enjoying yourself. So as I, as I changed my lifestyle, I realized sometimes the changes were making me very unhappy. And so I, I've been tweaking it a little bit. And the, the, what it is, it's a little bit of a learning curve. And when you first start to make these changes, it can feel overwhelming and a little bit like you're alone in this. And for me, especially 10 years ago, it was very difficult, especially being a teenager. And definitely none of my friends were doing, making these changes. But now, as I'm immersing myself in the culture in Northern Virginia of people who are like this, it is becoming much easier. And I hope that you all find it easier now as well, because it is a decade later and many more people are doing these things. But we want to just remember to always have fun and relax when we're making these changes, OK? So um, I don't want to get into too many details about how the immune system works, because I'm not I didn't study it. That's not my background. I only have the personal experience. I did a report on the immune system in ninth grade biology, but I don't remember any of it. So I'm just going to talk to you guys about what I know to be true about the immune system, which is we need to live in a way that is um, we're reducing the amount of stressors and irritants that we put onto our immune system, and we need to support the immune system even beyond anything we've ever been told to do. And I can only fit so much into this lecture, so I'm just going to um, sit, put a disclaimer out there. Many of you are very educated out there in the audience, and so if you want me to, if you're waiting for me to say something and I just don't mention it, it's just, I don't, I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information, and this could be a five-hour lecture. So I, I'm leaving some things out intentionally, definitely, for that reason. But, um, so what I said was we want to reduce the current and built up stress on the immune system and we want to support the immune system above and beyond anything you have been told to do before. So we'll start with reducing the current stress on the immune system. So that involves reducing the incoming irritants or stressors that we have going on in our lifestyle the way it's set up already. And also we want to detox the irritants or stressors that are built up inside of us from the history of living in this way. So there's, ma there's some main topics here that I want to cover today. Of course, there are more. But we've got food, 
your environment, your home, your office space, all of the irritants there, media, radio, TV, internet, your relationships and finances. And I feel like those are the main stressors that I'm feeling a, a connection to that I wanted to bring up, but I'm only gonna go into detail right now about the food, your environment, and media. So food and drink, I'll include drink in there as well. So there's a few points about the food. And so uh, I want to just, I'm going to kind of sprinkle my, my history with this into each slide a little bit instead of giving it all up front. So with the food, I wanted to talk about this first because I do feel like it's the most important, especially for autoimmune disease. I, when I was a sophomore, going into my sophomore year at Virginia Tech, I had um, been, had a really rough freshman year. I joined a sorority and I was not on a stable medication plan with my rheumatologist going into my freshman year. And so I was experimenting with different medications to reduce my inflammation. At the same time, I was in a new school in a new city with, or a town, or whatever you'd call Blacksburg. <laughs> um, it's uh, sorority, school classes, um, roommate, or, or, or uh, you know, hall, uh, I was in a, what is it called, a dorm room, so lots of different teenage girls staying up to all hours of the night and stressing about things that I couldn't care about at all, like, I don't know, boys and how to wear your hair the next day. My main concern was just getting through the day. And so, but I, I so I finally was just, I, I got on some medication that made me feel well, and then I tricked myself into thinking I was feeling well enough to live in the same way that all these girls were living. And, and it was, it was not a good thing. So by the end of my freshman year, I was ready to do something different, and I started, you know, Googling, and I think I Googled, like, cure for rheumatoid arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis diet and all that stuff. And now I had been, for years before, doing things like acupuncture, juicing, and switching to organic, but, you know, when, you, when you're living with a chronic disease, you go through ups and downs, and you have periods where you just, all you can do is get on the internet and Google what is going to make me feel better, because you get into the dumps, so, so down into the dumps that you just need to sit down and, and figure things out and so I had one of these revelations over the summer and I googled something about diet and arthritis and I came across the elimination diet which again and again I think it had been the breaking point where I was just like I need to finally do this and I did it I eliminated about 10 foods and I'm going to tell you what they are but I don't want you to think that these are the ones that you need to do necessarily and I don't want you to think that they're bad foods for you, because they aren't. I don't think there's any such thing as bad foods when we're talking about natural and whole foods, but for some reason, my body has a reaction to some of these foods that are actually quite good for you for some people who can tolerate them. But I'll tell you what happened. So when I eliminated these 10 foods, I, all of my symptoms went away, to the best of my memory. And, I, and then I, I love telling this story just because it's funny, but I mean, it's not funny, but... Um, my sister came to visit for her birthday to Virginia Tech. And it sounds like I'm blaming her, but I'm not. <laughs> my sister came to visit, and so it was her birthday, and we had this chocolate brown. I got a chocolate brownie thing for us, and it was gluten-free, and um, we had beer, and it was the concert that Dave Matthews had put together for the Virginia Tech after the shootings happened there. That was my freshman year, so sophomore year coming back. Um, I had been on this elimination diet over the summer, and I had eliminated chocolate, eggs, red meat, shellfish, pork, corn, citrus, peanuts, and I always forget the last one. No, nightshades I had done after that. I did a whole nine months of eliminating all nightshades and I didn't feel any bit better. So, but I do think it's a worthwhile thing to try. Oh, gluten and dairy. I didn't say gluten and dairy, did I? So anyway, so I eliminated all those. I felt so much better, like 90. 95% better probably. And then I had the chocolate, eggs, and beer all in the same night. And within hours, my skin was red and rashy again, and my joints were all swollen, and it was just a mess. And I thought, wow, this is really powerful stuff. And I don't, I don't have the answer as to why that happens, but I've obviously, you know, the leaky gut and the, all of the damaging things that we do that ruins the gut lining can be a big issue and it can be very difficult to heal that, especially with the stress in our lives. So that is obviously something that's ongoing and I know that eventually I, 
I, have, I know people who have overcome food allergies and that's my goal, but right now I'm still eliminating those things. And I do feel so much better doing it. I went for a period where it took me a while to get back into that groove of eliminating those foods. But anyways, I just feel so much better. And I know there's a few other things that I want to try eliminating just to see if that'll even relieve even more burden on my immune system. So what happens is that for some reason your body either has, um, when you were very young, you started eating these foods too soon and so before your gut was completely, the lining of your gut was completely formed because that actually doesn't happen for a while. Your mother's breast milk is supposed to help build up that lining of the immune system when you're born and so if you miss out on that or you're fed solid foods too soon, then it can be very damaging and it can um, cause a delay in the, in the gut lining growth and development. And so you want to make sure that if you're planning to have a kid, then you um, just think about the, the introduction of foods, making sure that you don't give them a bunch of the same kinds of foods too early, because I think that's one, the very beginning of when this food allergy thing starts. Then we've got GMOs, which increased soybean allergies by like 50% or something. Kayla Daniels has the statistics, but as soon as GMO soybeans were introduced, it increased the amount of food allergies to peanuts and soybeans because they're genetically linked um, or similar. So we've got um, this problem with antibiotics also, which ruins the gut lining a little bit, the, pro the good bacteria in there, it damages those. So there's lots of things in, against our, our favor when we're talking about digestion, a lot of things that hurt the digestive process. And it can, for me, it's been a long process to heal. I've done many things like the GAPS diet and specific carbohydrate diet and probiotics and different formulations from different companies. And so for me, I believe that I need to still do a little detoxing and de-stressing. And, um, so I talked a little about, about the food allergens, and I'm going to try to leave some time at the end to do questions, but herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, obviously we want to avoid those. If they kill bugs in the environment, they kill bugs in our body too, even the good ones. Processed food, reduce your chemicals, preservatives, and food that is low in nutrients, because if you're going to ask your body to digest something, you want to give it back something to replenish its energy, and so if you're eating food that is high in calories but low in vitamins and minerals, then it's gonna deplete your body. GMOs, I talked a little bit about that. That's genetically modified organisms and the issue linked with food allergies. And then moldy food, it suppresses the immune system and it makes it so that your immune system is not functioning at 100%. So if you have a cold, um, and this comes a little bit from Dr. Hulda Clark, H-U-L-D-A-C-L-A-R-K, Hulda Clark. I really recommend her if you want to get really into some of these things with immune system and pathogens and chemicals and detoxing. She's got some interesting information. But moldy food will suppress your immune system and make it harder for you to fight infection. So if you have a cold you, or if the flu, you want to avoid things like um, herbal teas, especially chamomile, peanuts, and bread or baked goods that comes in plastic wrapping because that, you know what happens to bread when you leave it in the plastic wrapping and sit on the counter for a couple of days or a week? Well guess what, the mold is there before you see it. It's just very small spore stages and you don't start seeing it until it's a really huge problem because at that point it's been growing for a few days or weeks. All right, so let's go on to the, that's the food piece. I'm gonna, I do wanna talk a little bit about, um, in the end I'm gonna talk more about superfoods and stuff and supplements, don't worry. Your environment, um, there's a lot of, um, mold spores and the flu virus lives on dust mites and everything that's on the dust and I believe that dust is also very irritating to the body and the nasal passages and um, so we want to make sure we're cleaning and wiping up our in, inner environment. When It's very easy to just let that accumulate but there's a lot of stuff in there that uh, like viruses and pathogens that can then infect our bodies and if you're eating a lot of the moldy foods then it's very easy if you're someone who gets a cold a lot think about this are you eating a lot of the moldy foods and then are you not dusting your house or vacuuming enough um, and then when we're cleaning though we want to make let me talk a little bit about cleaning this is like I wish I could do a whole topic on this but I wanted to just mention that your um, the all you know obviously we want to use cleaners that aren't going to harm us even further and there's this big there's a there's a lot of t things to talk about in this arena but I want to just tell you what I do 
and, and you can take it or leave it. But I have started, I really like cleaning, I really enjoy cleaning. Snow White was my favorite Disney movie when I was a kid, and guess what scene was my favorite? When she goes into the woods and finds the, little, the dwarf's house, and she goes inside with the, all the woodland animals, and they clean up. It's like the best scene ever. And I watched it over and over when I was a kid. I cannot figure out why I loved that scene so much, but I really enjoy cleaning, and I'll, like, I'll wipe down the walls, all the splashes on the cabinets and the baseboards, and I'll, and I don't do it very often now, I don't have time, but I love cleaning, and so I've tried to do this thing where every night before I go to bed, I do like one room of the house. I just dust it, or I wipe down the walls, or, or um, we do a lot of gardening, and so it, there's lots of stuff, on, like mud on the, in the mudroom. And anyways, I've just been, I want to do more of that, but right now it's been busy with planning this conference, but it just, it makes, there's also this thing where it helps you clean out your mind, too. There was, I don't know who said this first, but a tidy kitchen is, it makes for a tidy mind. And I think what happens is when you're sitting there straightening your living space, not only does it make you just feel clear, like there is some energetic stuff going on there, but it also helps you as you're cleaning to relax and process through the day's events and just kind of simmer over things and come to terms with things that are going on in your life. And if and so much of what, so many times we just instead of cleaning in the evenings or, or getting our our thoughts processed, we sit in front of the TV and stuff more thoughts into our brain. So um, that goes into another topic I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, but cleaning the house. So basically what I do is I use either a damp, a damp cloth. The first thing is dusting, I think. Straightening, dusting, and then vacuuming. And after that's gone, you can wipe down and do, you know, if there's dirty stuff all over. But you don't need a lot of fancy cleaning products, really. You don't. You just need, like, a broom and a vacuum and a damp cloth and maybe those unscented Swiffer dusters. I like those. Those are great. But a damp cloth, not wet, but a damp cloth will also dust pretty well as long as you're, it won't damage your furniture. You can just, I, I don't think it, the water will damage most if it's just a little bit damp. So, and, and just don't feel overwhelmed by it. Just do one night, one room every night or every other night. And then by the end of the week, I mean, you will feel much better. It's great to feel like, oh, I'm getting a little bit done every night and then not to spend a whole day on Sunday or Saturday cleaning everything. But some of you probably just hire a maid, so that's cool, too. <laughs> this is a therapeutic thing for me. But if you do hire a maid, then just maybe ask them, you know, can they use less scented products? Because those scents r are really damaging as well to the nervous system and the immune system. All righty. So the media, I talked a little bit about that, sitting down um, at night and stuffing your brain with more thoughts that aren't even yours. They're other people's thoughts. And, and you have your whole day to process still. So I noticed that when I was really, really ill, bedridden or so, I'd be, I'd be in the bed a lot, and I wouldn't be watching a lot of TV. And that, I, I started to notice when I felt better, I would do more of watching TV, and I started to feel worse again. Not physically, but, you know, mentally, it was just very stressful. I didn't feel good about my life when I was watching other people who didn't feel good about their life. And... Um, so, you know, I'm going to let you guys make of that what you will, but I think that we should all take a look at what we're putting into our minds, um, what we're using as examples of how we should think and live and interact with other people around us, because there's a lot of bad examples out there, and there's a lot of stuff going on in our own lives that, would, that we need to process and deal with, and it's not fun always. Like in the car, I'll get in the car and I'll just... Uh, turn the radio on sometimes because I don't even want to think about what's going on in my head. I don't want to let those thoughts come up. I think that's okay to a certain extent if you're just, you know, you need to, you have a, a job to do that day and you need to get it done and you need to just not think about a few things for a while. But if you're doing that on a daily basis, you're getting into the car and you're putting the music on and you can't even talk, you can't even stand to sit there and listen to your own thoughts or if you're bored, or, you know, just practice sitting alone with your thoughts and see what happens and let them process. And it's like this hump that you have to get over, but once you get over it, it can be really enjoyable to, to not have that constant input. And the other thing about it is that these other, these inputs, the TV and the, the music, it's all on a different vibration, like a different energy level than you necessarily need to be at at that point. So like if you listen to Hot 99.5 as you're driving around every day, or even, even the oldie station, whatever. That's, like, that's party music. I mean, that's dance music. 
and even, I mean, all of them, there's, there's a few, like 97.1 in this area. I know a lot of you are out of town, but there's some radio stations that are very soothing and relaxing, but then the advertisements come on. So what do you do? You're sitting there, you know, what's the word? Getting yourself revved up for an event that's not even happening. So your, your adrenaline is pumping, and your adrenal glands are getting worn out, and you're, you're really depleting your body at that point because you're asking it to go into fight or flight when there's no reason to go into fight or flight. You're listening to other people's problems on TV and you're going into fight or flight and you don't need to for other, another person that you don't even know or you never will know them. That's, you know, just think about how many times you go into fight, fight or flight mode, you're stressed out, your heartbeat quickens or you're feeling like revved up for something that you don't need to be revved up for. We're asking so much of our bodies and uh, it, it's really wearing us out. So that's the media piece, and so just observe it, you know? Don't just cut yourself off cold turkey. I'm not asking, I think it's unrealistic. I still listen to radio, I still watch TV. Um, I love Gossip Girls, and that's like one of the worst shows out there for bad examples of how we should interact with each other. But anyways, um, we need a little bit of that. It's exciting, it's fun, but don't overdo it, and just think about this and how it is affecting your life. All righty, so we talked about reducing the input of irritants. Now let's talk about detox, reducing irritants that are already built up. Um, there's several ways to do this. Detox your body from chemicals and, and toxins. Reduce your pathogen load and process the mental input that is built up. So I talked about that a little bit just now. That's a deep form of detoxification too, is your mental stress. So detoxing your body, your body knows how to do this on its own. I can't stress this enough. So many of us have the impression that we need to do a cleanse to detox, but your body is constantly detoxing. And that's just kind of a trendy word for it too. It's really called, I mean, they used to call it, we also call it elimination or um, just normal body biological processes really. Elimination is exhaling, sweating, urination, and pooping. So. That's all completely normal, and we have decided that it is not okay to do those things or talk about them. Um, exhaling, we're all worried about bad breath. Sweating, we're all worried about smelling bad or having sweat marks. We're worried about, you know, talking about going to the bathroom, and we stop ourselves from going to the bathroom. Today, I didn't even get to go to the bathroom until like 11 o'clock because I was talking to so many people, and that, I was like, I'm going to get up on stage and talk about this. It's, I'm, it's silly. that, And in school, the teachers keep you from going to the bathroom when you need to. The kids go to school so early, and sometimes their body isn't even ready to have a bowel movement before they get to school, and then they're sitting in class, and they don't, they're not even allowed to go to the bathroom sometimes. And eliminating is one of the most important things to do because otherwise it's sitting in there, and your body is, your body is trying to eliminate the, the toxins, and you're just making it hold on to them. And sometimes they do recirculate sometimes, and, and sometimes they just build up in your, in your colon. But, um, and then dehydration also causes a, an even worse problem there, obviously, if you're constipated. And that can, dehydration can also contribute to constipation. So we just want to make sure that we are allowing our body to do these natural, these processes. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do this, deal with the sweat later. Um, give it the nutrients that it needs to detox. Don't go on a diet. Don't restrict your nutrients or calories at this point because your body will, your metabolism will really slow down. If you're sick, don't reduce your calories. Your body needs the calories for the metabolism, for the hormones, for the immune system to work and function and rebuild and rejuvenate. Just make sure it's nutrient dense foods. And you want, so stop inhibiting the detox process, which we're going to talk, we are talking a little bit about. Um, and cleansing will accelerate elimination. So that is why these cleanses are, and detox is such a trendy thing, because you can't accelerate the detoxification process through herbs and through movement and through certain types of yoga and certain, um, you know, the pH, the alkaline water, some of the green juicing, fasting, liquid fasting, colonics, um, enemas, 
coffee enemas, those sorts of things, and sauna, sweating, all of those things can help you detoxify qu more quickly. And I think it's wonderful to incorporate, if one of those really resonates with you, incorporate it into your lifestyle so that it's a habitual thing because what's happening is that we're taking in more toxins now than we ever had before at a faster rate. So we do need to help the body a little bit because we haven't quite adapted to this increased load of toxins. So we can um, help it out a little bit and don't stop it from doing the natural elimination process. We want to reduce the pathogen load, and this is actually one of the most important things I want to talk about today because um, of my history with rheumatoid arthritis and how many holistic practitioners out there believe that rheumatoid arthritis is triggered by an infection. And whether it be Epstein-Barr or Lyme disease or another one out there that's common, herpes or something, you know, there's a lot of different things, chronic um, fatigue and lupus and all those things there's theories that they're triggered by an infection of sorts. So there's different things you can do to reduce the pathogen load. Obviously, sleep, I think, is the most important. Um, I can tell after three nights of not sleeping well, I'll get a tickle in my throat, and then I sleep really well for the next few nights. I take some herbs, and I do some essential oils, and I, I use my zapper, and it's, it's much better. I, I haven't really come down with anything in a few years, and I attribute it to my lifestyle, but I did, um, a few weeks ago, I felt so sick, nauseous, and kind of just so exhausted driving home one night, and I just, and this is what I do, and I highly recommend it. I know some people's lifestyles do not accommodate this, but when you start to feel a little itch like that, like you, or a, a tickle, or you're tired, more tired than normal, or you think you're getting, coming on with something, get into bed. Drop everything and get into bed and don't get out until you feel strong enough to get out. I just felt so weak. I didn't even want to walk anymore. I got into bed, and I didn't get out of bed until the next morning. I got in bed at 8 p.m. I didn't get out of bed until 10 or 11, and I felt brand new. I gave myself an enema, and I had a smoothie and camu, and had some hot tea when I got up in the morning. And then I went about my day, and I felt so much better. Okay, so there are ways that you can stop things from coming on because it's really just your immune system is too weak and tired to fight off this virus. Our immune system should be able to handle the cold and the flu just fine, but we're not allowing it to. We're, we're not, when we get the signs, we're not stopping and letting our immune system take over and, and handle that virus for us or, or bacteria or whatever it is. So I, I don't want to get into too many details on this, but you all can Google the zapper if you want to learn more about that, and you can Google these companies for the herbs. Those are the ones that I've used in the past, and I still use them, and I've, I've found them to be helpful. Sleep, everyone, no, we don't really know how to sleep anymore, do we? Do I need to teach you guys how to sleep? Um, a lot of people have trouble sleeping, though, and I didn't really plan to go into that talk a little bit, but I think it's important to know that your body is very, a response to patterns, and so it's very easy to get to throw it off and get it used to a different pattern. So it may just take a while to get into a new habit and to get back into that sleeping cycle. Um, it's really important to get into a, a steady sleeping cycle and to at least sleep, you know, for a good seven or eight hours every night, which some people think is ridiculous. If you can't sleep that long, I mean, obviously don't kill yourself over it, but six, seven hours for an adult eight, nine, ten for a teenager. I'm right about seven, seven or eight hours now. And your body will secrete hormones. There'll be hormone cascades that happen based on your sleep cycle. And so if you're not, if you don't have a normal sleep cycle and you're not sleeping enough, these hormones will become imbalanced. And your hormones regulate everything in your body. So, um, and that's not my area of expertise, but it's just a very important thing to mention, and it's something that you should learn more about. If you're having hormone problems, think about your sleep first before you go on a crazy fast or something that's depleting your body even more. Maybe it's just simply a matter of sleeping more. Um, okay. And then processing the mental input, I talked about that. More detoxing still. We're getting rid of the current burden on the immune system. Process the mental input from life events, daily interactions, media, TV, radio, internet, all of that input, we need to have time to process it. So meditation is obviously the most popular way. Cleaning your house is something that I do to process. Um, different things, you can get creative. Going on a walk is really helpful as well. Talking to someone, 
you need to have output as well. So we have all this input, and we can process it through meditation and everything, but what about the output? What are we putting out there? We need to, that's, you know, goes into your creativity and what's your purpose here on Earth? What do you love doing? What's your passion? And it doesn't even have to be that, though. Sometimes that puts a lot of pressure on people to feel like they need to be doing something other than their job. But just talking to someone, seriously, building relationships and talking can be so therapeutic and can fulfill that need to create and put, do out, have output as well as the input into your, your mind. All right. So this is ongoing work, like I said. And so I don't want you to feel like you have to just fix everything right away that I'm talking about. But it's a very delicate thing, especially when you have mental and emotional scars from the past. And so I started you know, following Hay House and all of those authors a long time ago. And I am working on my emotional scars from the past. And, but you, it's not something you can do overnight. It takes years and years. It's a lifetime to do that. And you just work on it one day at a time. And we need to be forgiving with each other. And we'll all get there. And meditation, the last day, just already mentioned that. OK, so the, we're back to the, so the two steps. We just talked about reducing the current and built-up stress on the immune system. And we're going to talk about supporting the immune system above and beyond anything that you have been told to do before. So like last winter, when one of my family members had a cold, I was, like, I was just doing Amazon herb tea and camu and essential oils and my zapper. And I was doing everything I could think of, taking superfood super smoothies and doing um, black or elderberry extract and all that stuff. Um, and I was making sure I was doing nutrient-dense food. So for me, that's like seaweed and bone broth and homemade soups and superfood smoothies and fermented vegetables and all of those things that are really high in nutrition and low in calories. And it's not that I'm doing a low-calorie diet. I eat lots of calories through fat, coconut oil and olive oil. And if I wasn't doing dairy-free, I would be doing butter. But what I mean is that there's a, the, it's more imbalanced as far as the amount of calories and the nutrients are, is also up there, too, as opposed to it being calories and nutrients down here, OK? <clears throat> rest, we talked about resting. And you don't just have to sleep, but you can also just relax on the couch don't, and just sit there, you know? When you have time, just experiment five minutes of doing absolutely nothing when you feel that little tickle coming on. Movement and exercise, supplements, and hygiene, OK. Nutrition, I talked about this. Those, that's the food that I recommend. Hydration, you, I'll let you decide what good water is. Don't drink the tap water, especially in Reston or Tyson's or you know those places. They put fluoride and chlorine, and I'm not going to go into the details. But we want to just, what you think is good water, whether it's going out and finding your own spring water, or doing the alkaline water, or getting a Brita filter, or another type of filter. There's a Berkey filter system that's pretty good. So I'll let you guys decide what kind of water you want to do. And you can also hydrate through other methods, like smoothies and green juices and kombucha and other stuff. Oh, whoops. Superfoods, these are my favorite superfoods. Mangosteen, blue-green algae, maca, bee pollen, and camu. And I really think that that is why I'm able to work so hard with an autoimmune disease. Um, when I first had blue-green algae, when I did it for the first time, I told my mom, I'm having the best day that I've had in a really long time. And I think I even said I'm having the best day ever. And she probably doesn't remember that, but I definitely remember saying that because I laughed afterwards. And I said, I heard about blue-green algae from David Wolf, and he, his brand is like, have the best day ever. So anyways, I thought that was pretty cool. Now, what I eat, I mean, basically what I eat is what's on the menu at the Take Back Your Health Cafe. I helped her come up. We, we worked, worked on creating that menu together. So that's kind of what I eat on a daily basis, just to give you guys an idea of you know, what I'm talking about here. All right, so are you guys breathing still? <laughs> are you relaxing? All right, movement. So um, do you guys, I'm just going to have, if, I, I know you guys may be comfortable now, but everyone just stand up for a minute. My massage therapist taught me something very interesting that was your, uh, your when you sit, the way that your sit bones sit on your certain tendons or blood vessels that go from your upper body to your lower body, the way you're sitting actually basically pinches those blood vessels. And so you're decreasing your circulation drastically when you sit. 
And so that's why, you know, the, the whole, okay, whoa, this is really exciting. I'll do it later when you guys sit down so you can see me. But when you crouch, that's the traditional way that humans would get low to the ground is they would just crouch like that. And so they would, um, they, they just knew that with circulation was better. It was just intuition, whatever. Now we're sitting, and so our circulation in the lower half of our body is getting cut off a little bit. And we just want to make sure that we, you know, Stand up, move around a little bit more than we, than we normally do, okay? So you guys can sit back down. I just wanted to get you guys standing up for a minute. It's been about 40 minutes that I've been talking, so. All righty. Good. So, great. I'm making good progress. All righty. Movement. All right. Oh, I wanted to show you guys something so cool. I have to brag because I have had rheumatoid arthritis for 13 years, and I've had moments where I couldn't even dress myself. When I was in middle school, my mother would dress me and blow dry my hair, I remember distinctly, and I would show up late. I missed one third of the days my first um, quarter of my seventh grade year. And it was, it's, there's been times when I played lacrosse, and now I went through this period where I couldn't even, I had to quit all sports and dance, and it was just, it was very sad, because as a teenager, you want to use your body uh, to sports, and you want to wear nice clothes and impress your friends and all this stuff. But anyways, I was just, I was feeling, you know, so terrible that I couldn't do many of these things, and recently I was able to, I'm actually, I'm probably going to rip my jeans and like everything's going to fall off when I do this, but I can crouch again and I can come back up with my, look at this, that's so amazing. I could not do that even three, three months ago, I'm telling you, it's just been amazing, this, this, life, this elimination diet especially, like I talked about. Um, so, and, and I'm dancing again. How many of you guys heard me say at the end of my talk last time that I was going to take dancing lessons? I'm dancing again. I'm so happy. And I was doing ballet and jazz and modern in high school and middle school and elementary school. And now I'm doing ballroom dancing lessons, which is much more fun for me. So, it's, it's great. All right. Supplements. This is a big topic, and I'm going to try to finish up right after this so I can take questions. Cod liver oil, and, this is what I do. This is my personal supplement list, and I'm not going to recommend or say that you should take this or shouldn't take it. I'm just going to tell you that I have found these to be, over the 12, 13 years that I've been experimenting with supplements, I found these to be the most effective in reducing my symptoms and with prevention. And so this is cod liver oil, noni juice, this combination. Sally Fallon recommended. I was taking them separately before, but then I started taking them together, and I got this like really cool buzz when I did that. Um, I take it in the morning, and it's like a, a zen buzz. It's not like an alcohol buzz. Um, and then minerals. I think that these are some of the most important minerals to take. Uh, iodine because of protecting the thyroid. The thyroid uses iodine to sterilize the blood to a certain extent, and we're not getting enough iodine in our food anyways. Zeolites for detoxification, fulvic acid for minerals, magnesium because many of us are low in it anyways, and it's, it's part of the Cowden protocol that I was on for a while, and it was, um, it was actually very, I found it to be helpful as far as energy levels, and I know that a lot of people do it. It's also supposedly helps you reduce your body odor, uh, like it's anecdotal, but I think that uh, a couple of people I've heard have said that. When they take more magnesium, their body odor goes down. Superfoods and B vitamins, I take sometimes. Amazon herb tea. I use Jing herbs, actually. I do some of those, the reishi and the deer antler velvet. Vitamin C, camu, mangosteen rind, and then different supplements for different phases of your life. So I, this isn't the complete list. Occasionally, I'll take different things. Outside, oh, okay, so hygiene. This is my favorite part. Natural skin care, hygiene. All righty, I want to go through this um, a little bit quick, but purpose of washing is to get rid of the dust and debris on your body. It is not to sterilize or rip all of the oils, natural oils, off of your skin. So when we rub up with Neutrogena or soap, it rips, and hot water, it just strips our body of all those natural oils that are the, out, the layer outside of our cells that is protecting the cell wall from pathogens getting their way in. So when we get rid of all the natural oils on our skin, our cells are then exposed and, and very easy for pathogens and viruses to get right in. And so you want to leave that um, coating of oil on your skin and don't use super hot water and don't use soap everywhere. Now this probably sounds pretty gross to say that, but what I'm saying is we want to exfoliate maybe with a dry brush before we even get into the shower and that gets rid of a lot of the dirt and, de and dead skin and then when we get in the shower, we use soap in the important places, 
if you know what I mean. And then we use, you know, lukewarm to warm water, so you don't want to get cold in the shower. And then, you know, you don't really need to use all that body product. You just need to make sure that you're getting all the dirt and debris off, and then you are getting the dead skin off, and you're leaving some of the oils there. And I do use one product in the shower. I use shampoo. I brush my hair before I get in, and then I use shampoo, and then I get out. I use a little, little soap and a little shampoo. And then I get out, and I use coconut oil if it's summertime. I don't use coconut oil in the winter because it'll get too solid in your hair. I use like almond oil in the winter. But I put a little bit of oil in my hair on the ends as like a, a frizzies or as a conditioner, but I've brushed my hair before I've gotten in, so I don't need a conditioner to detangle it, right? So, and then I put oil all over my body to kind of replenish that natural protection. So I use four products on a daily basis, a little bit of soap, a little bit of shampoo, and coconut oil or almond oil, and then maybe some special fun oil with essential oils in it. I just rub it all over my body. And people are so scared to do that because they think, oh, it's going to clog my pores. But you know what really clogs your pores are food allergies and eating chemicals and toxins, and your body is excreting it through the pores. And we're not letting it come out because we're putting all of these products on and we're not sweating. We're keeping ourselves from sweating and letting our body naturally and we're not eliminating properly. So our body's starting to eliminate through our skin, right? So when I put oil on my skin, it actually, it, it doesn't do any sort of clogging. I don't have any problem with it. And I know that it also has to do a little bit with genes and hormones. So I'm not saying that this is for everyone, but um, experiment with it on your, you know, on your legs maybe, first of all, because a lot of people don't have acne problems on their legs. So just try that instead of lotion, because those lotions, even Aveeno, is still full of stuff that we don't need. Plus, it's in a plastic container, and it's, you know, you have to use more of it. When you use oil, it's just a little bit, right? And you spread it around. Okay. Sun protection, um, I would just, I just want to touch on that, and then so I, I went through all this, actually. I just talked about that purpose. I'm, okay. And, okay. All right. So I want to talk about this natural sun care, and then I want to take questions. All of these things, I was going to talk about this. I was going to talk about nail polish, ear, earrings, piercings, tattoos, clothing, and how we, you know, feel the pressure to do these things. And it's nice, you know, it's also a way for us to express our individuality. But I think we should just be more aware about, you know, if you have an autoimmune condition, do you want to go get some piercings? Because it's going to be a huge stress on the body. I mean, not huge, but it's a, obviously our body can deal with cuts and scratches, but this is something that our body is constantly trying to heal. And I had a hard time keeping my ears pierced because my body wanted to keep healing the, the wound. And, and so I was, I, when I would go a few weeks without it, it would just want to, you know, keep growing back together. Um, the makeup I use is a natural mineral makeup. I use Bare Minerals, and, and I use it, you know, I, I don't think there's a perfect makeup line out there, but that's okay. I just use it a little bit. And so we want to make concessions, like I said. We don't want to make this completely unfun. We just want to be more conscious about our decisions. Tooth whitener. This is the really exciting part. Um, I just found out that activated charcoal, however scary it sounds to put black powder on your teeth, it is a tooth whitener, and I've been using it for the past week, and I don't have black teeth. So I promise it doesn't stain your teeth black, but I would experiment with it. Half a teaspoon in your mouth, swish it around, and it'll detoxify the mouth, and it'll whiten your teeth in about a week. Um, and then the sun skin care. When we, use, um, when we use sunscreen, we're blocking the body's natural signal to get out of the sun, which is the sunburn. So... The sunburn is there to say, hey, you've been in the sun way too long. Get out and into the shade. And if we stop the sunburn from happening, we think that we solved the problem. But what we're really doing is making it more comfortable to stay out in the sun longer. So some people are saying that perhaps, because some people, you know, they wear sunscreen their whole life, and then they still get skin cancer. Maybe it's because you're staying out in the sun even longer and you're putting all those chemicals on that the sun is reacting with and causing even more problems and with your skin, you know, damaging the cells even more. So that's just something to think about. And I had that back on the natural sun protection. This is what I do. I, I had gingivitis really bad about a year or two ago and all my gums fell off. And this is the protocol that I followed to grow my gums back. They're still not 100% back, but they're about 80, 90% back. 
Um, and I think that's, I'll just let you guys do research on oil pulling. The tongue cleaner is amazing. It's a life changer. Hydrogen peroxide mouthwash, flossing, essential oils, and brushing. Um, it takes me about 10 or 15 minutes to get ready for bed. I've got it down to a, a routine, but like I said, introduce one thing at a time that really resonates with you. Some of these things won't resonate at all with you, but your mouth is the beginning of the digestive tract, and there's all these bacteria coming into the mouth all the time from your food, so you want to make sure that you've got healthy teeth so that you don't bleed in your mouth, because when you bleed, you're automatically, your blood, your whole body is opened up to those bacteria. Okay, within minutes, the bacteria can get from your mouth to the rest of your body because you're not taking care of your teeth, you're not flossing, and your gums are bleeding a lot. So just t pay attention to that as well. It's a very key part of reducing the pathogen load. Okay, questions? Yeah. Is this like oil pulling? Yes, so that would be, um, it's a very old practice, of several thousand years old or more, and it's, I guess it's a tr a traditional in Asia and in India. They would take like a teaspoon of oil into their mouth and swish it around for about 10, 15 minutes. Perhaps it was sesame oil. A lot of people are doing coconut oil now. Some people are incorporating essential oils into it. And what it does is, I believe the main thing is it, it does detoxify because some um, toxins are fat soluble, but it also helps reincorporate a, or it helps rebalance the environment and ecosystem in your mouth as well. And I haven't done a lot of research on it, but I just get a good feeling about it. And a lot of people were recommending it to help heal the mouth and in reduce infection in the mouth. Okay. On oil pulling? Great. Sanaya so National Integrated Health Associates, they have some information on that. Okay. Yes. Do we actually, it would be good, I just realized we should probably speak into the microphone because I can't really hear you nor can the recording heard. So if you guys wouldn't mind just, if you do have a question, run up to the mic real quick. Or Sergey, we'll just take two or three more questions. Right, so should you continue to use nail products with all the chemicals in them? I mean, if, if I was, if you were, it was, if it was a life or death scenario. No. If your doctor has given you a prognosis and it's not looking good, no. But if it gives you a lot of joy to paint your nails, do it, right? But if it, if it doesn't really matter either way, don't do it because it does have a lot of harmful chemicals in it. But if it gives you a lot of joy, you know, maybe do it every once in a while, okay? Yes. Anything else? Yes. What is a zapper? So a zapper is a electronic device that has different frequencies that apparently correspond with different pathogens like viruses and bacteria and parasites in the body that will kill them basically. It's like electrocuting them. But it, it's, they're on such a different electro, electro frequency than humans and the heart. So it doesn't interfere with us. It's like a much lower frequency or a much higher. So I'm not the expert on this, so I don't want to go into too much detail, but you can research Zapper, Terminator 2 or something online, World Without Parasites, David Wolf, Longevity Warehouse has one, Dr. Halda Clark. I would recommend doing a little research. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope that was helpful. And Sergey. Oh.